The Wolf and the Seven Young Kids from the Tales of the Brothers Grimm There was once an old goat who had seven young ones, and she loved them as much as any mother could love her children. One day she wished to go into the forest and get food for them, so she assembled them round her and said, Dear children, I'm going out into the wood. Don't open the door while I'm away. For if the wolf should get into our hut, the wicked, deceitful creature would eat you up, even to the very hairs. You may easily know him by his rough voice and his large black feet. Dear mother, said the young kids, we will be very careful to keep out the wolf. You may leave us without the least anxiety. So the old goat made herself quite comfortable and started on her way. She had not been absent long when there came a knock at the door and a voice cried, Open the door, my dear children. I have brought something nice for each of you. But the young kids knew by the rough voice that it was the old wolf and not their mother. So the eldest said, We shall not open the door. You are not our mother. She has a soft and gentle voice, and your voice is rough. You are only a wolf. Then the wolf ran away to a shop at some distance and bought a great stick of white chalk, which he ate to make his voice soft. After he had eaten it, he went back to the goat's cottage and knocked again at the door and said, in a soft voice, which the little kids thought was their mother's, Open the door for me now, children. I am your mother, and I have something nice for each of you. But the wolf put his foot on the window sill as he spoke and looked into the room. The young kids saw it, said, and one of them said, No, we shall not open the door. Our mother has no black feet like that. Go away. You are the wolf. So the wolf went away again to a baker's and said, Baker, I have crushed my foot. Please to wrap it in dough. That will soon cure it. And as soon as the baker had done this, he went off to the miller and asked him to cover his foot with flour. The miller was too frightened to refuse, so he floured the wolf's foot and sent him away. Such is the way of the world. Now went the wicked animal for the third time to the house door and said, Open the door, dear children, it is your mother this time. She has brought you something from the forest. Show us your feet, said the little kids. Then we shall know if you are really our mother. The wolf placed his white foot on the window, and when they all saw it was white, they believed that what he had said was all true. So they opened the door. But as soon as he entered the house, they discovered that it was the wolf, and with screams of terror ran and died themselves. One hid under the table, another in the bed, the third in the oven, the fourth in the kitchen, the fifth in the cupboard, the sixth under the wash tub, and the seventh in the clock case. But the wolf found six, and without much ceremony gobbled them up one after the other, excepting the youngest who was hidden in the clock case. After the wolf had satisfied his greedy appetite, he went out lazily and laid himself down in the green meadow under a tree and fell fast asleep. Not long after the old goat returned home from the forest. Ah, what a scene it was for her! The house door wide open, table, chairs, and stools upset, the wash tub broken to pieces, the counterpanes and pillows dragged from the bed. She sought for her children in terror, but not one could she find. At last she heard a little voice cry, Dear mother, here I am, shut up in a glass case. The old goat helped her kid out and then listened while she described the deceitful manner in which the wolf had managed to get into the hut and eat up all her brothers and sisters. We can guess how the poor mother mourned and wept for her children. At last she went out, and the little kid followed her. As they crossed the meadow, they saw the wolf lying under a tree and snoring so loud that the ground trembled. The goat examined him on all sides and saw a movement as if something were alive in his stomach, Ah, thought she, if he only swallowed my dear children, they must be still alive. So she sent the little kid into the house for a pair of scissors, a needle, and some thread, and very quickly began to cut open the monster's stomach. She had scarcely made one cut when the little kid stretched out his head, and then a second and a third sprang out as she cut farther, till the whole six were safe and alive, jumping around their mother for joy. The monster in his eagerness had swallowed them whole and they were not hurt in the least. Then their mother said to them, Go and fetch me some large pebbles from the brook, 
that we may fill the stomach of the dreadful creature while he still sleeps. The seven little kids started off to the brook in great haste, and brought back as many large stones as they could carry. With these they filled the stomach of the wolf, then the old goat sewed it up again so gently and quietly that the wolf neither awoke nor moved. As soon, however, as he had had his sleep out, he awoke, and stretching out his legs felt himself very heavy and uncomfortable, and the great stones in his stomach made him feel so thirsty that he got up and went to the brook to drink. As he trotted along, the stones rattled and knocked one against the other and against his sides in a most strange manner. Then he cried out, What a rattle and rumble! They cannot be bones of those nice little kids, for they feel just like stones. But when he came to the brook and stooped over to drink, the weight of the stones in his stomach overbalanced him, so that he fell in and was drowned. The little kids and their mother ran over towards the brook when they heard the splash and saw what happened. Then they danced round their mother for joy, crying out, The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! And this was the end of The Greedy Wolf. The End